Assalamualaikum, this is a lecture for MIT 529, lecture 4.2 So the topic is how to write policy and procedure manuals Okay, let's have a look on this scenario You just got hired as a medical lab scientist in a well-known and leading hospital The WSY Medical Center, yes And as a staff, you would have two big questions in your mind First, the rules Where to look for the rules for what to wear, your health and safety, and your working hours. And second, your jobs. And where is your responsibility? Okay, for the boss, how do the employers deal with the employee admin and operational issues? As we all know, a common medical lab got around 30 to 100 people working in it. It is very important to make sure that every worker knows what has to be done and what not. So we need a document, a printed document that stated the rights on the workers' health and safety, working hours, salary incentive. Second, how to ensure that all procedures are performed to the criteria set by the lab. We're talking about the test quality itself. As a lab offered 100 type of tests. And of course, we're talking about the medical results for patient care. We need the best in accuracy and reliability. So again, we need to have a step-by-step -step procedures and checklist that are easy for employees to follow. There are two types of manuals. First is the policy and second is the procedure manuals. And these two types of manuals, so now we focus on lab levels, need to be written to cater two types of users, the external users which uh, consists of the customers, patients, nurses and doctors and the internal users We're talking about the MLT and lab staff itself so first let's talk about policy manuals yes this is a policy for you guys talking about stating about the dress code for students should trigger something right so now you, sh you should at least uh, understood a bit about what is policy policy manuals is a guideline to help companies dealing with issues especially on administrative and operational matters so we will have a big policy about the company and second about the hospital but for us we specifically focus on lab policy manuals on lab levels they are not as detailed as policy manuals just now we talk about there are two types of manuals policy and also procedure so in policy manuals usually it is about dress code food and smoking rules telephone use safety rules specimen rejection criteria we will talk a lot more on this later and handling of results okay for example by using a specimen rejection criteria as an example we look on the lab policy for internal user for the mlt okay somewhere along the sentence we will find found the way of writing like this the lab personnel checks the integrity of the samples where the lab personnel is satisfied the sample shall be processed samples that fail to meet the correlation requirement are subject to rejection and this is an example of a policy for the external users we're talking about the document to be given to the nurses doctors or even the patients and again we are talking the same thing about specimen rejection criteria so the way of writing 
to ensure the quality of the results prov provided are not compromised due to the quality of the specimens, our lab personnel will inspect this like uh, uh, the, the writing style should focus on telling the third person, the customer, what uh, we will uh, guarantee them. Second, we will talk about the procedure manuals. Okay, for procedure manuals, this is step by step directions on how to perform a task, test or process. They need to be standardized. So we're talking about the other name for procedure manual, which is standard operating procedure, SOP. And the common scope is uh, you are usually talking about performing tests, SOP on operating equipment, and SOP on performing QC. Example of SOP, again, in specimen rejection criteria, the lab personnel shall document, we are talking about the sample already being rejected. So the lab personnel shall document this in the sample rejection sheet. Second step, immediately notify the ward clinic that the sample was received and did not follow expected specimen labeling or collection criteria. And the third step, fourth step, so on. We are talking about the step-by-step -step process of rejecting the specimen. And this document will be used by the MLT to follow. So why we need SOP? First, to achieve the criteria. The criteria we, criteria we're talking here is about the quality, reliability, and specificity of the uh, our results, and to assist us in uh, solving problems such as when doing troubleshooting. And they should we talk about procedure from step one until finish. So they are very details. How to write the manuals. So first we, we talk about when writing the manuals. Point one, it should be built on. So the philosophy of the document should be built on. First, they should be fair and consistent for all employee. And second, they should be standardized includes expectation on the performance and behavior and they need to include information on day-to-day -day operation point number two the goals of why they are created why these manuals are created first they are complete for every procedures so it will be the reference for the workers and they are they should be clear and easy to be understand by all levels of user uh, regardless whether you are junior mlt senior mlt managers they should be uh, simple in writing style and easy to be understand by other people and they should be well organized. The information should be easily located within minutes, not within days. And point number three, need to meet requirements of licensing and accreditation agencies. So for medical lab, this is very important. This is a requirement we need to have uh, accreditation to operate. For example, in Malaysia, we have this MSISO 15189. This is a medical uh, laboratory uh, standard for accuracy and quality of results. Usually, these ISO people, the people who, the agencies, we, who will be later giving this accreditation and license, they will need, they will look on these documents. And it will check on how detailed it is. 
how related is the document to the work done in the lab and they need to be well organized again the information should be super easy to be located within minutes a typical contents of SOP this is a, a typical content so if you go through a few SOPs you will find some will have less uh, criteria and some might have uh, more so for typical content of SOP they should have purpose scope definitions procedure references responsibilities related forms related policies key users training implementation plan and table of documents okay benefits of manuals we talk on manuals about on this lecture so what are their benefits first they will increase productivity second provide consistency and quality control create safer work environment and provide motivation to staff to do the right things because everything is stated there everything is is written from a to z on day to day procedures so you should follow so again as a new staff the big question is where to look for the rules you can find the rules in policy manuals and what is your job and responsibility you can look on procedure manuals and sop here is the required reading for this lecture this is the reference thank you assalamualaikum